So I woke up this morning to see that Alexander Povetkin had popped again on a Vada drug test. And his fight with Berman Stavern, which was an eliminator for the WBC, had been called off. Berman Stavern, apparently, I think he was being offered a seven-figure payday, decided thanks but no thanks and withdrew from the bout because of Povetkin failing not once but twice this year. He's a two-timer. And the thing is, he's not even the only two-timer we've had this year that's been caught by Vada. So real quick, I'll get back to the Povetkin situation, but just sticking with Vada for a second. I've had several of you guys argue with me, whether it's on Twitter or YouTube or whatever, that UCAD, which is the, the UK testing authority, or USADA, which is the American testing authority, are just as good as Vada. And they test for the same stuff, they have the same protocol, et cetera, et cetera. Well guys, here's further evidence that they're not. VADA, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association, is the best in all of boxing, if not in all of sports. And the thing that I like best about them is, believe it or not, they announce the results before the damn fight, even if it's 24 to 48 hours before the fight. And we've seen in the past, UCOD, USADA, all of them, they've announced the results after the fight happens, after everybody gets their money and everybody's happy and everything goes back and forth, all that cash exchanges hands, then they announce the results. UCAD didn't announce results, I think once, six, seven months after the fight. VADA, even if it blows up a fight, they announce the results, man. And here's what I love about them. They don't dole out punishment or anything like that. I don't think you guys, some of you out there, don't quite understand this. All VADA does, is perform the testing and report the results. And they, they don't set the protocol as far as what is a banned substance. They follow the protocol set by WADA, the World Anti-Doping Association, or agency. I can't remember, but it's WADA. I know there's all these damn terms you have to remember, but WADA sets the protocol. They have the banned substances list. VADA follows that, and they just do the damn testing, and they report the results. Then it's up to the uh, sanctioning body, uh, the, the, the local authorities in the commission, whether it's a state commission or a national commission, the fighters, their teams, etc., to figure out how to handle the situation and how to dole out punishment or suspensions and all that. VADA doesn't do any of that. They just test and report. And that's what they did here, okay? And Povetkin, look. We gave him the benefit of the doubt earlier this year. He tested positive for a substance that had just been added to the bad substances list. And there was nuance there because there was a certain timeline that fighters or athletes, I shouldn't just say fighters, had to get that substance out of their system. So Povetkin and his people said, hey, it was only a trace element and this isn't even really a bad substance and there was a timeline and we met the timeline, blah, 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 blah. Without going into all the minutia there, Basically, Povetkin was given another chance to retest. He did. He passed those tests. And okay, all's forgiven. Let's move on. And then you have the fight coming up or was, that was supposed to happen with Berman Stavern, who, by the way, he's popped for tests before too. So both these guys, Povetkin and Stavern, had some suspicion around them. So they stayed enrolled in Vada. The difference this time is that Stavern tested clean. Povetkin didn't. Now, even if you want to give the guy a benefit of the doubt for the second time, and it's not out of the realm of possibility, but we're talking one in several million here, as far as the odds, that he somehow uh, accidentally ingested a different substance into his system in the same year that he ingested you know, a different substance accidentally earlier in the year. Even if you want to ride with that and give the guy the benefit of the doubt, he shouldn't be allowed to fight until that, that investigation has been conducted and we know what's going on and there's some sort of explanation, he's retested, et cetera, et cetera, right? And by the way, he tested positive for Osterine. I don't know if it's Osterine or Osterine, it starts with an O, but that's the substance, substance this time that he popped for. And that's been on the banned substances list for a while, okay? Even if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, there should be an investigation conducted and completed before he's allowed to fight again. But that didn't happen here. Stavern pulled out of the fight and they just found the next willing available guy. And Johan Duapas, 
Dwapas, Dwapas, I don't know how you say the last name exactly, I think it's Dwapas, he jumped on. And, and I think less than 24 hours notice, he jumped in and took the fight. Hey, it's his prerogative, right? Just as much as it was Stavern's prerogative to say, you know what, thanks, but no thanks. And some of you guys bashing Ber Berman Stavern here for pulling out of the fight, you need to get your head checked. It's his prerogative, and if he doesn't want to fight a dirty fighter, a guy who's popped twice in the same damn year in his home country, that's his prerogative. Yeah, he walked away from a seven-figure payday, but believe it or not, there are some people out there who still put principle before money. Those human beings still exist. So I have no problem with Stavern walking away, and I have no problem with Duapas jumping on board. But I do have a problem with the Russian authorities, the Russian commission, allowing that shit to even happen. Shouldn't have happened. And for Duapas, he, if you guys see f uh, photos or video of the fight from earlier today, he didn't even have boxing shoes. He was in, I think, running shoes. It looked like running shoes he was fighting in. Doesn't even have boxing shoes. That tells you how prepared he was for this fight. Jumps in there, goes six rounds with Povetkin, gets knocked the fuck out badly. How is this a good look for boxing? How is this okay? How are you guys cool with this? I understand it's difficult if you're a fan of Alexander Povetkin, if you're a fan of any fighter, when they let you down, it's difficult, right? It hurts. You feel honestly let down and disappointed. But guys, there's gotta be some objectivity here. And like I said, if you wanna give the guy the benefit of the doubt, again, fine. But he shouldn't be allowed to fight until an investigation is done and a retest that he tests clean for is done. How this was allowed to happen it's disgusting. It's one of the worst things I've seen in boxing in a long time. Look, you guys know I was really upset with the Andre Ward, Sergey Kovalev thing. And I really, really felt that the house fighter got a gift in that fight and the boxing establishment had their way on that night. And now Andre Ward is talking about possibly retiring. I think that's all just negotiation tactics. I think, I hope, the rematch will still happen. I wouldn't put it past him to walk away from it. He's walked away from contracts before, not the most Christian of behaviors from a very Christian man, but I could do a whole nother rant on that issue, okay? But you guys know where my heart lies on that subject, but I gotta be objective. And yeah, this is the establishment guy on the other side of the world having it his way where he is the establishment, right? A Russian fighter in Russia fighting 24 hours after it's reported he failed a damn drug test. And it wasn't the first time he's failed a drug test this freaking year. That shouldn't happen. I don't care if you're a fan of the guy. This is not comparable to Ward Kovalev in that respect. It is, you know, the establishment guy having his way here, but there hasn't been some injustice. Vada isn't xenophobic against Eastern European fighters. That's not happening here. Dude got caught twice in the same year. There has to be repercussions. Real quick, Sky Sports, got to give them props. They were going to air that card from Russia. I think it was in Moscow, uh, over in the UK. And when they found out what happened and that the show was going to go on, they said, you know what? We're pulling the plug on this one. We're not going to show this. So props to Sky Sports for showing some ethics as well. You know. Last weekend, I dropped the ball on um, HBO Championship Boxing. They aired a fight between Raimundo Beltran and Mesa Menard. And Beltran was popped for steroids just last year, and he's not enrolled in VADA testing right now. And not only did he, uh, he wasn't enrolled in testing, and he scored a big time knockout over a young, strong fighter, but HBO said nothing about it. So, and the, and the promoter said nothing about it. Very, very bad look from those guys. And they should be held accountable for that as well. You guys know me. I piss a lot of you off. People uh, in every fucking demographic of boxing hate me. And some people that ride with me for a few months, I say something the wrong way and they fucking, they become one of my haters. And that's because I tell the fucking truth. Every time I tell the truth, whether you like it or not. And this situation sucks. As far as I'm concerned, Alexander Povetkin is a two-timer. Just like Lucas Brown of Australia, right? 
two-timer. Drop him from the ratings. You're a two-timer. Until you can get your shit together and pass a fucking drug test, gone with you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to hear about it. And you know, the, 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 biggest, the biggest tragedy in all this is we were robbed of some really, really great stories and some really, really great fights this year because of these guys popping on tests. It feels like it was years ago, but earlier this year, Lucas Brown traveled to Russia and fought Ruslan Shigaev and came back from behind in that fight to not only beat him but score a knockout. It was a thrilling heavyweight fight, and he grabbed a title. And of course, he's Australian. And now you got Joseph Parker with the title, and he's from New Zealand. Those two guys could be talking about title unification next year over there in Australia, unifying two of the heavyweight titles. That would be a huge fight in Sydney or something like that. We are robbed of that potential mega story because dude failed a drug test, was given the benefit of the doubt, signed on for another fight. He was supposed to fight, I think, Shannon Briggs for the regular title again, failed again. And now you look at Alexander Povetkin, who was supposed to face Deontay Wilder, right? And Deontay Wilder wasn't exactly uh, jumping up and down and, and eager to fight him. It took forever. They stalled because that's what him and his outfit does. Al, that whole Al Heyman outfit, that's what they do. They stall till the last minute to sign the damn fight. It's just how they operate. But they finally did sign the fight, guys. And Wilder was willing to go all the way to Russia. He was training over in the UK for that fight. He wasn't training in America. He was training in the UK to help him adjust to the time. He was dedicated to going over there and doing the damn thing. And Povetkin screwed it up. It wasn't Deontay Wilder's fault. It wasn't the WBC's fault. It wasn't Al Heyman's fault. It was Alexander Povetkin's fault for fucking that up. And even after he was given a second chance and they put him up against Berman Stavern, two guys who have popped, he screwed that chance up. So now the fight between Wilder and Povetkin, that would have been a thrilling, great heavyweight fight. It would have been the biggest test of Wilder's career. It probably would have been a, uh, the biggest test for uh, Povetkin's career after Klitschko, right? It would have been a great heavyweight fight. And we were robbed of that. And now that fight's probably never gonna happen. Because again, Povetkin's a two-timer. So, yes, I, I, I don't wanna become the steroids guy. There was a steroids guy before. He's now kind of out of the sport. And I don't, I'm not trying to take that crown, but I do seem to be the only one who's talking about this right now. And it's not cool. We need to talk about this more. In the last few weeks, I've started tweeting out, usually Thursday, Friday, right around the weigh-ins, uh, whatever big fights are happening that weekend, I tweet out who's enrolled in VADA and who's not. I'm gonna continue doing that. Um, I, I think that's important. So you guys, when you see those tweets, retweet them. Get that information out there, because fight fans need to know. And when a fight fan tries to argue with you that, hey man, who cares about VADA? This, this is in the UK and they're doing the UCAD testing. Explain to them the damn difference and give them situations like this as an example. And then give them situations like when Tyson Fury failed a test. I think he fought Vladimir Klitschko last November. They didn't make Klitschko aware of it till this June, which is why Klitschko and his side demanded Tyson Fury take VADA testing because they weren't happy with UCAD testing, right? Understandably so. UCAD did not give the Klitschko camp Fury's full uh, storyline, his history with drug testing. So they demanded VADA, and guess what? VADA popped Tyson Fury. Do you guys see the pattern here? VADA has popped more fighters in the past year, just this year. We, I'm not even going to talk about the last few years. Just in 2016, more than all the other agencies combined. And they're testing less fighters and popping more fighters. You guys who have seen my video when I asked Richard Schaefer uh, a couple or a week ago at uh, right after the Charlo Williams fight and I asked him who did the drug testing and blah 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 and I specifically brought up VADA and you saw Richard Schaefer kind of freeze up like a deer in headlights. He skipped around it 
But the history there is that back when he was with Golden Boy Promotions and Al Heyman, and they were pretty much all working together, they went with Vada for a few fights, and all their fighters got busted. Several of their guys, not one or two, but it was a handful of their guys got caught. They popped on the Vada test. And very, very quickly, Richard Schaefer and Al Heyman said, you know what, we're done with Vada, let's holler at USADA. And they started doling out big, big bucks to USADA, who does good drug testing, but not great drug testing. And some of their history and their protocol, the way they handle the test results is very sketchy. So don't expect Richard Schaefer or Al Heyman or any of those guys to go VADA unless they absolutely have to. And that's why we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about these stories. We gotta educate fans. We gotta let people know what the fuck is going on because this matters. This isn't basketball, a pussy sport, or baseball, or football, where you get to wear a helmet and you got teammates. There's a second, a third, and fourth string quarterback if the first string quarterback gets concussed. This ain't, there ain't no damn pads. There ain't no injury timeout. This is boxing. It's 2016 and we still have fighters dying in the ring. This ain't 1950, this is 2016 and people are still fucking dying. And you guys want to argue with me because I talk about drug testing. Wake the fuck up.